I think China's approach to modernization has uh, shaped uh, the BRI. Uh, it's a country that is still developing, a country where every time I come here, I lived in Beijing for one year just before the pandemic, you see an enormous drive towards uh, technological growth, technological development. And the result was that the BRI turned out to be much more focused on developing capacities than uh, traditional models of globalization. It's not enough to open borders or to remove obstacles. Uh, that negative approach is not sufficient. You need also to build capacities. People can only join globalization if they have the ability, the capacity, the powers to do that. So the BRI is different in that sense. Another way I think it is different, it, it, it does, from the very beginning, from 10 years ago, it does uh, appeal to a long historical trajectory. And I think uh, my own country uh, thinks about these things very differently. You know that we have a 500-year relationship with China. And so when people in Europe uh, sometimes or in the United States say China is an enemy or is an adversary, for us, the question is posed over a period of 500 years where we had excellent relations with China. Uh, and I think the BRI also tries to capture that, that it is perhaps very human to think about what happened yesterday, but we have to elevate our perspective to thinking about centuries. This is the political responsibility to think about the long term, not to think about what happened yesterday and be captured by the news of the day.